many times we hurt people because we've never really found out who we are. Yes. That, that's how ugly unforgiveness is. It, it hides the real person that we are. I have seen people, I have helped people on this journey of forgiveness. And I'm telling you, when they forgive, they just became a different person. They became sweet to hang around. They became, they just, and you're like, all that was in there. But the devil, what had the devil done? He wanted to hide it. He wanted to mask that so that we can see the picture that he wants of these people. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to be that person anymore. Do you realize that many of these things that God tells us to do or God gives to us are for our own good? They are for our own good. In, that, in, in, in the main passage that we have been using, we saw how the king forgave his servant. He wanted to take this servant, sell him and get back what, he, what, what, what the servant owed. But the servant pleaded and the king had compassion on the servant. Praise the Lord. And he released him. Yet when the servant met his servant, which means a smaller servant. Yeah, when you're a servant and you have a servant, they're smaller. <laughs> Praise the Lord, junior servant. So when, when, when he met his servant, he held him by the neck, Mashati. Praise the Lord. And threw him in prison. And yet, what this servant owed was very little compared to what this big servant owed the king. And when the king heard of it, he took him and threw him to the torturers, to the tormentors, not in prison, but to the tormentors. And we established that you'll be thrown to the tormentors until the debt is fully paid. It's until we forgive. This is New Testament. Red letter words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, because sometimes people say, oh, you see, that is Paul. You see, when Paul was speaking, we are not so sure. Paul had Jewish bias. Oh, no, this is Jesus that was speaking. Jesus, the Son of God. The one who was perfect. Hallelujah. When we have unforgiveness because we have a wound, somebody has hurt us. Praise the Lord. And we have a wound. And many times, this is... This is, most of the times actually, it is not, it, it, it is in, yeah? most of the times it is not intentional. Many times it's intentional, but most of the times it's not intentional. Praise the Lord. Because we hang around people, you're going to realize that most of the people that hurt you, it was not intentional. Yeah, they are those who it's intentional. Hallelujah. But not all. And the issue with this wound, like I said earlier, this wound is not on your shoulder. It's not on your thigh. It's not on your toe. It's in the heart. It's in your heart. The very heart that God says, God jealously, for out of it flow. Yes. In, you see the heart? The word has almost filled the entire heart. That heart is heart. Wounded, yes. Wounded. Yeah. So I have said this is sometimes intentional. And many times. Or you can use another word. Accidental. Hallelujah. Now. This is, this is out of your control. You don't control this. You don't control if you're going to be wounded or not. You don't control if offense is going to come your way. That you, you have no control. You wake up and pray, God, please may I never be offended in my life. Do you, do you know if, you, if, you, if you're keen and you hear God well, do you know what he's going to say? You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then say you're joking. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Then say, grow up and see. You need to see. You need to see. Now, when this happens, like I have said, it is out of our control. Out of our... Out of our control. But, 
in this situation, we have, we can make a choice. Yeah? Yes, we have a choice to make. The choice is 100% in our control. And the choice is twofold. Yep. One choice is to obey. Another choice is to disobey. Now let's read let's read our, our main portion. Let's let's go and read our main portion, the portion we've been reading. Matthew chapter what? 18. Let's read, let's read uh, from verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. By the throat. Hey. He was not joking. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he, he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Actually, it's a fellow servant, not even his servant. Can you imagine? Fellow servant. So when his fellow servants saw, that, saw what was done, they were very sorry came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that debt, because thou desiredst me. Now, he said, wicked servant. I said, when we do not forgive, we are. This is Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want you to turn around looking for wicked people. Focus on me, I'm preaching. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 33. <laughs> Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses now the word trespasses is in plural and he says everyone say that god's desire god's will is that we forgive everyone of every trespass praise the lord that is his desire there is no exception so if we forgive, when we obey, we forgive. Isn't it? Disobeying, we hold, we, we hold on to unforgiveness. We do not forgive. That is disobeying. Now, this choice is a hundred percent in our control. Being offended unforgiveness coming to you that has nothing to do with you it is not in your control praise the lord Hallelujah. even right now some of you go home the matatu conductor may offend you praise the lord the 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 the, the gate man may offend you yes they will tell you why do you always come late you see as if they are your parents they will tell you that <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, you're going to say, yeah, which kind of pastor is that? You know, th that, is, that is not in your control. That is not in your control. But the choice of what you do after this is 100% up to you. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you're in charge. You're in charge. Make the right choice. Hallelujah. The right choice is obedience. And when we obey and forgive, this wounded heart is healed. We receive healing. 
And when we receive healing, we start to enjoy the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Remember, I explained to us what the, how many times this word basanizo is used in the Bible. And you realize that sometimes it was used to mean sickness, to mean emotional pain, to mean torment, literal torment. That word was used for that. And so if we do not forgive, we draw judgment to ourselves. I explained to us what judgment means. Judgment does not mean that God is in heaven saying lightning strike them. That is not what judgment means. Praise the Lord. Just like I told us a magistrate, a judge is not the one who really sends you to prison. He's not the one who passes the judgment. It is the law. Praise the Lord. Yes, it is the law. You can, that is why he tells us that if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged with the world. So judge, ju judgment is not a bad thing like many Christians think. Praise the Lord. We judge ourselves. So how do you judge yourself? It is trying to see wh what is wrong and what is right. Am I walking in disobedience or am I in obedience? That is judgment. And that is good judgment. Jesus says his judgment is perfect. What was he talking about? Why does he say we will judge the world? Praise the Lord. Why does he say judge one to judge yourselves? Hallelujah. So if you do not, judgment comes your way. If you are told that if you go out there and steal, you will end up in prison. When you go and steal, you attract judgment to yourself. It is not the judge. It is not the magistrate. You, you've gone out and sought for judgment. Now, all these things that he's talked about when he uses the word basanizo, illnesses, many illnesses, turmoil, anguish, things that we go through in life, many of them are obvious as long as we are not in forgiveness. James chapter 3 verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil So it's not God who brings the evil work. As long as you're in envying and strife, you allow it. The evil work comes in. So you start seeing things. And I'm telling you the truth, a number of people have been healed physically just because they forgave. Healed. Physically. Also healed emotionally. Hallelujah. It is a real prison. Yeah. So they, that is what will happen here. When we don't forgive, that is what will happen here. Torment. You know? A curse. Curses. You know, now this is, we don't talk about generational curses a lot in this ministry. But now this is the reason. Curse means absence of a blessing. Curse means there is no God's backing. That is what a curse means. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, so if you turn away from the, the blessing of God, what do you get into? You get into a curse, which is so sad that many, even many believers have chosen to be in that. Many believers have chosen to not walk like God wants us to walk, not to stay in the, in the ways of God, and we have drawn this to ourselves. Hallelujah. So, how do we know that we should forgive? How do we know that we should forgive? We check us from whatever I have shared in the last two sessions. You share. You, you look at your life. Are you in anguish? Are you in torment? Praise the Lord. Whenever you see this person, do you, is a wall raised? Do you shiver when you see this person? When you hear that they are succeeding, does it bother you? You get what I mean? Yes, th this is true. I'm telling you, this is true. There are people who watch your life. And whenever there is a good thing, they are hoping it did not happen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If you're that kind of person, it means you need to forgive. You easily diagnose yourself that way. Because that is what he has said. That is, that is basanizo. That is torment. That is torture. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Th there are people that I have never really talked to. We've never really interacted. Maybe some of them have just said hi, and I, like, but we don't. I don't know what they are doing at, totally. But I heard them saying this ministry is going to go down. They are busy following, watching, 
They know every step that we do. They, they know this guy, they've moved to this building. They've done this. Yeah. They need to forgive. Yes. I don't know what we did to them, but they need to forgive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is not a good life to live. And many of us can diagnose ourselves that way. Husbands and wives. Yes. Yes. Realize that a wife is not happy that the husband has got a promotion. The wife is not happy that the husband has got... Yes. I'm not happy that the wife is talked good about or that the husband is talked good about. Yeah, this is true. This is true. So when you see some of those things, you realize that you need to offer forgiveness. Praise the Lord. You need to offer forgiveness. Don't run away from forgiveness. He is a great friend. And one fact I'll tell you, time never heals like you've been told. Time does not heal. It's what you do in that time. Praise the Lord. Time alone does not heal. I've just given you the example of this wound. If it is never opened up and cleaned properly, that wound is never going to get healed. Eventually, that hand may actually be amputated. Praise the Lord. So, don't deceive yourself. Don't think that, let me just forget about them. Five years later, you'll be in pain. Seven years later, you'll still be in pain. Yes. I've seen people who have gone to their grave in pain. Yes. It's tormenting. Praise the Lord. So don't buy the idea of time will heal. Don't, don't sweep things under the rug and think that they are just going to work on themselves. No. They will not. That devil will wait for an opportune moment. Hallelujah. And use that pain. Hallelujah. Now, requirements for lasting forgiveness. Because we want to walk in lasting forgiveness. Yes. Not forgiveness that is five minutes. Praise the Lord. You forgive them today, tomorrow you post about them on Facebook. That is not what we are talking about. So number one, open your heart to prepare to forgive. Matthew 18, 35. Matthew 18, 35. Open your heart to forgive. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not. Now that word forgive there from the original translation it is subjunctive. You've heard of the word subjunctive? Now you know. What does subjunctive mean? Yes, subjunctive. In simple terms, yeah, it means that the choice is still yours. Is that what I said? Yeah. It means it's that. He's not saying that because uh, sometimes we think that God is going to come and make me forgive. Praise the Lord. Yeah, then those who walk in unforgiveness, it would be unfair. It would be God didn't make them forgive. Praise the Lord. On Sundays we are talking about authority. And I have told us how the sovereignty of God has really been taught in a very wrong way. The sovereignty of God means that many people say whatever God wants to do, he will do. Praise the Lord. Which is a lie. And who said that he wants to do whatever he wants to do? He's already told us in his word what he wants to do. Praise the Lord. A few examples in the Bible, he says that he's not willing that any perish, but that all may repent, that all may turn to him in repentance. That's what Peter says. That Jesus is not slow concerning his promise. Mockers will come, scoffers will come in the last days and say, where is, where is, where is his return? Where is this promise of his return? And he says he's not slack as many people think, but he is patient, long-suffering, because he does not want any to perish. His desire is that the whole world be saved. Is the whole world going to be saved? Psalm 78 verse 41, doesn't it tell us? How they turned their back. They turned their back away from him. And they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited him. What he wanted to do, he could not do. They limited him. 
He speaks in Isaiah and says, all that you had hearkened to my voice, then your peace would have come speedily. He really wanted them to be in peace. God Almighty, and he could not do it. They limited him. They limited him. And there are a number of cases that you will see that way in the Bible. Hallelujah. As human beings, he has given us authority on earth. He said, let the earth belong to them. They should have dominion on earth. That is why he did not intervene when Adam and Eve were eating the apple. I know some theologians are writing and saying false teaching. Where does he get it that it's an apple? I'm still learning. It's a mistake I made us. Praise the Lord. Next week I'll know better. Hallelujah. Just comment on apples and correct me. Next week I'll come and use your correction. Okay. Aguava. Aguava is hard. Maybe it's aguava. That's why we are suffering. This suffering can't be an apple. Yes. Aguava, chili, or sweet melon. Who named sweet melon sweet? Actually, it's not meant to be watermelon. Then watermelon should be sweet melon. They didn't know English. Yeah, they, they are being sarcastic. Yeah, they didn't. And they call it sweet melon. To, to, because they knew it had no market. They knew that if we say sweet, people will buy it. It's not sweet at all. Hallelujah. When we, when we, we open our hearts to prepare to forgive, that means we remove walls. We remove walls. Yeah? It is up to us. Anyone can open their heart when they choose. Praise the Lord. Anyone. Anyone can open their heart. Yeah, let me go to diagram number two. Today I came to draw. I came to do what? Not that drawing. We really need English lessons. <laughs> hey, this this eraser is is stubborn. It's subjunctive, yes. We should send it to the tormentors. Yeah, but we 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 have a choice. All of us can open our hearts. Praise the Lord. Have you ever been in a situation? Let me show you how you can how you can open your heart. Yeah. You see, there is a time somebody had had done something wrong to me. As lovely as I am. To me, imagine. <laughs> so, they lo you love Mushene. This is just for the Kenyans. Yes. <laughs> but you know, so during this time, you know, he, he's not, he's talking bad things about me. He's not interested in, and then, so, you know, he's, I think I'd not even yet forgiven him. <laughs> As just in my house, I'm happy that uh, we don't have to interact that day. Then somebody calls me and they say he's in a very bad state and it is late at night. You get what I mean? I got up, I went and looked for them, and they were in a very bad state. I took them to the house, you know, just helped them and all that. And yeah. What am I trying to say? I opened my heart. I opened my heart. And all of us have had a point where we've opened our heart. Praise the Lord. You're happy, you're, you're merry, you're, and somebody came and just told you, oh, there's this problem. Maybe it, at times it's not even somebody that you've offended. It's not, but. You know, you 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 in the room here, and you 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 finish service, and you're laughing, you're happy. Then you hear so and so has been kicked out of the house, and immediately you stop laughing, you stop whatever is going on. What does that mean? You've opened your heart. Praise the Lord. You've opened. Otherwise, you would just go in like, no, we are happy, we're here laughing. Why should you interrupt us? But immediately you switch. You switch your priorities at that time. You open your heart. 
And you say, can I, can, can I go meet them? Where are they? They can come to my house this night. And you're going to work in the morning. Maybe you had planned to sleep at 11. But now you're getting to their place at midnight. By the time you're getting to your place, it's 2 a.m. You're planning to sleep. It's like you've, you've ignored all the other aspects of, I want to wake up early. I want to be at work in time. I don't want to doze during the time. You've opened your heart to them. That is proof that we can all open our, our hearts. Praise the Lord. And, and it is the beginning of us preparing, preparing for lasting forgiveness. Hallelujah. That point, point number one is that opening your heart. There are five points. I don't think we will finish them today. So I'm drawing your friend. You know them. <laughs> Telling you their gym, their their legs look like they go to the gym daily. So, this is the person that offended you. <laughs> that is the offender. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, this X here is the trespass or what they did. Trespass is one S in the middle. It's This is what they did. The problem with most of us as Christians, why it's very hard for us to open our hearts, it is because we see this person like this. That is how we see them. The person and the trespass are one. So it becomes very hard for us to open our hearts. Praise the Lord. It becomes very hard for us to open our hearts. But let, let's go back. Let's, re, let's read verse 27. Matthew 18. Let's read verse 27 and we read 35. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him debt. Was moved with compassion. There is no way you're going to have compassion on this person if you see them like this. You know, we will talk about that point of compassion, why we must have compassion. Verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not. You start from your hearts to forgive. We will see that in details also. But if you learn to separate the trespass and the person, then it becomes easy for you to... You see, when, when you don't forgive them, you have locked them in a prison. Hallelujah. Yes. When he says when we forgive them, when we release them, the same word there is the, the same word is the same word that is used like to release Barabbas, like let him be released. It is literally in a prison. And you have seen that, I have seen that there is a time I was ministering somewhere in Uganda, in eastern Uganda. And there is this family I went to, and the father was very tough. He didn't want us to preach. We were doing door to door. The father got stones, he got stones from the compound to stone us. You know, but we pleaded. We said, we just want to have a talk. We just, the children had got born again the previous day. And they wanted us to come and speak to their dad. And when we got in the house, he's calling children all sorts of names, as if they're not his own children. But he says, we shared about the love of God, and we shared about the love of God and all that. The father, I think that is what happens, I think, in our culture, because this was from our area. Our culture, I didn't know about it until that day. But as we are still talking, before we even pray, the father got a small jerry can of water, drank the water, didn't swallow. Yeah, you know, I need to be clear. So he drank the water. Then he came and spat on all his children. And the children started crying. And they hugged him. They hugged the father. And they cried for a while. And I was, I really wanted to lead them in the prayer, the confession prayer. So that I can go and say to die one three souls. But they were just crying, you know. <laughs> but you know what happened in that moment? The father released his children from prison. These children are desired to hug their father. They are desired to extend love to their father. To show their father love. But they could not. Because he's not forgiven them. They were held prisoners. As we go through this series, we realize many of us will forgive our parents. And forgiving them does not mean that what they did you condone. 
It does not mean that it was not unfair. But you realize you forgive them and you realize that they come out of a prison. They can now love you. They can love their grandchildren because they have been in a prison. Praise the Lord. And you see how it impacts that person also. But it has to start with us separating the person from the trespass, from the offense. And we are going to realize how it's important to release the, to forgive the trespass and also forgive the person. Because sometimes we'll forgive the trespass but we'll leave the person in prison. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But it is important to do both. Now my assignment to you today is that as you go home, or even we're going to take a few minutes to pray, as we pray, think about these people. Think about the people that you, you, you feel like you need to forgive. Can you separate them from the offense? Somebody, one time somebody took money from us. And so we went with my wife. We said, let's meet, let's meet them. <laughs> so, you know, my wife has taught me to be a leader. My wife is the real leader. Uh, my being phlegmatic, many times I don't call things as they are. <laughs> so my wife kept saying, this guy is a thief. He's a thief. So I kept telling her, no, he's not a thief. He took our money, but he's not a thief. So, <laughs> like, he's not a thief. I kept telling her. He's not a thief. He says, but what do we call people who steal? You know? <laughs> Side he's not a thief. So we met. And we met with a person. He admitted. He did not say it's not true. He admitted. And then as he started explaining, he was under a lot of pressure also. External pressure. That he was tempted to take the money. You know, I felt compassion for him. I was moved. Yeah? We forgave him. And up to today we are besties. We, we are very good friends. As we are going to see here, that does not mean that you condone what the person did. Compassion does not mean that you, that, that, that you buy the excuse. But you see, if we are going to release them, many times God requires that we sit in their seat. And when you sit, that is why Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. I told you, one pastor said, these ones know what they are doing. The ones for Jesus didn't know. But for me, I know. Father, these ones I know. Repay them. Avenge me, God. So many times that is the prayer. Yes, oh God, avenge me. Yes, yes. Fight my battle. Fight my battle. But God wants you to be in that person's... Yes. We've met with many children who are not in good terms with their parents. And sometimes it is just that perspective. What if your parent was raised this way? What did their mom do to them? What did their dad do to them? Is it an excuse for what they did? No, 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 no. no. But you see, it opens your heart and it allows you to have compassion. And you see, that is preparing to forgive. And when you come through to the end and you've fully forgiven, you realize that you are the free one. You have wings to fly. Praise the Lord. I like it that when I walk, there is no one I meet. And I feel like, you know, now what are we going to talk about? But you know, you're going to realize, of course, Forgiving does not necessarily mean that you should get back to the relationship you had sometimes. There are times, of course, it should. But there are times, no. It does not mean that you should not keep healthy boundaries. That is not what I'm talking about. But you're free. Praise the Lord. There is no one who can call me right now and I'm like, hey, I can't pick that phone call. There is no one. And I feel free that way. You get what I mean? Yes, I can say hi to anyone. And we are going to realize that many times... God requires forgiveness from us. We are going to realize that compassion, giving compassion is twofold. You can be moved to give compassion. You see, as this friend of mine admitted that he had taken the money and started sharing the circumstances that caused him and he asked for forgiveness, I was moved to compassion. Praise the Lord. Just like this Lord, this ruler, this king, when the servant came and fell down before him, he was moved. 
it was more of what the servant did that moved him to to have compassion that is easy of course for most of us yeah if they are really a man they should come and apologize <laughs> the other fold is that he requires us to forgive even when they don't apologize and majority of the times they are never going to come to apologize they are never going to come to say sorry most of the times they are not going to come to say sorry hallelujah now jesus came and died for us on the cross he came and hung on the cross for us he did not wait for us to say we are sorry for god demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners not after we had realized and said oh god I think we need your forgiveness no he did not wait for that he came and forgave us he's sending paul to the gentiles and he's telling paul i have called you i have chosen you i have appointed you to go and open the eyes of the gentiles that they may receive forgiveness of sin in other words the forgiveness had already been granted god had already opened his heart it is god who says i will take a stony heart away from them and i'll put a heart of flesh in them a new spirit will I put in them my spirit I'll put in them they shall be my people and I shall be their god not because they had said I am sorry hallelujah this is the nature of god and we are born of god hallelujah we are born of the spirit we are born of god so his desire is that we take on his nature we walk in his nature majority of the people that we need to forgive are not going to ask for forgiveness they are not going to apologize majority of them of course those who ask for it it's easy for you to be moved i know some of us are too callous but many times when somebody comes to ask it makes it a little easier you feel like they've owned up and so when our walls are there many times we we you see we are hooked john bevere wrote a book called bait of satan and you read through the book you realize offense is the bait of satan that's what the devil uses whoever you yield yourself to becomes master over you whoever you yield yourself to obey becomes master over you so you starts giving assignments to you so that is why your desire because they have not apologized is that they suffer that is evil it's the devil who thinks that way and many pastors not just nigerians yeah there yeah, are many pastors so oh, because you left my church you're going to suffer because you're going to die you're going to and many times it happens but it does not mean that that's god's ideal it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's that's what god wants praise the lord and that is why you see like that pastor will be bothered when he sees that person growing when he sees them prosper he feels bad he feels bad when a church member leaves their church and joins that one but why why you get what I mean? But we can be free and God wants us to be free. Hallelujah. God wants us to be free. God is not there every time remembering what Adam did or what you did. Why does he say he, he forgives our sins and he forgets as far as the east is from the west? He says your sins I'll remember no more. First of all, he separates us from the sins. Hallelujah. He forgives the sin and he releases us. That is the example he wants us to take on. He's a loving God. He's a good God. Walking in love means forgiving. Praise the Lord. It is going to be very hard for you to forgive yourself if you don't start with forgiving others. Praise the Lord. Many people have at least passed forgiving others but they have failed to forgive themselves, which we will get to. Hallelujah. I want you to bow your heads. And I want you to just just think about what the Holy Spirit is telling you. What is the Holy Spirit telling you today? About forgiveness. What is he saying to you? What is the word of the Holy Spirit to you? Do you need to open your heart? Are your parents in prison? Are your friends in prison? 
that person who raped you, that person who stole from you, that person who caused you to be fired from work, that person who hurt you in church, that church that hurt you, that organization that hurt you, politician, president, have you kept them in prison? It keeps you in torment. It keeps you in anguish. But once you start opening your heart, you have started preparing to forgive. You've got on that journey to forgive. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God did not wait for us to apologize. He did not wait for us to be good. He did not wait for us to do good. He is a loving God. He is a wonderful God. He is a great God. My prayer is that by the end of this series, we are all free. That we are all free. That every sermon that we hear takes us one step, almost steps, in the direction of forgiving and letting go. Because as He is, so are we in this world. He has given us that nature. And we can do it. It is possible. He says, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. What he asks us to do is not difficult. It's not a hard thing to do. Like we would assume. He takes the heavy yoke from us. He takes the heavy burden from us. And he gives us his which is easy. And his which is light. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. And to highlight, to highlight any of those that you need to deal with. And you will enjoy freedom. You will enjoy liberty. Real liberty. The truth is that God does not condone that it happened to you. Some of the things, if you are to share some of the things that you've failed to forgive over, it's painful. Humanly speaking, I will not even understand how you, you can forgive such a person. But God knows that that is where there is real liberty for everyone. That's where there is real freedom for us. Now still with our heads bowed, like I have said, God chose to forgive us. Even when we didn't apologize, when we didn't go after it. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you've never received him as your Lord and Savior, or you've never publicly received him as your Lord and Savior, Maybe you even, you, you've been going to church or somebody invited you here or you just saw our poster, someone said, let me try, let me go. You are scrolling on YouTube and you saw us and you joined in. Today you have a great opportunity to become a son of God, to become a child of God. The price was paid. The price was, there is no more price to pay. Many people say, but I need to prepare myself. You can never prepare yourself enough. You can never prepare, you, you just make it worse. You can never Jesus came because he knew that we could never prepare ourselves. We could not get it done. And he went and did it for us on the cross. Ours is to say yes to the offer that he has. Jesus is heaven's grand gift to us. There is nothing to lose. What we surrender to him is a broken life. It is rags. And he gives us a complete life. A whole life he gives to us. Hell and heaven are real. Few people talk about hell and heaven today. Jesus spoke about hell more than he spoke about heaven. When I speak about hell, it is not to scare you, it is to warn you. There is really life after life here on earth. And it is not God's desire that you go to the devil's hell. The devil knows that his judgment is final and his end is hell. And he wants to go with as many people as possible. Do not give him that opportunity. Choose heaven today. There is a place for you in heaven. Jesus paid for it. You can say yes to him. And eternal life begins right here on earth. You cannot peace. You cannot the peace of God on earth. You cannot forgiveness right here. You can walk out of that door today free of guilt. Free of condemnation. Free of the devil's bondage. Because he says that whoever believes in him shall receive eternal life. And you receive eternal life today. You receive eternal life right now. You may say, Pastor, I gave my life to Jesus Christ some time back. But I, I, I don't love him anymore like I used to. I don't have that. I don't treat the word like I used to. I want to come back to that place. Can I love him like I used to? Can I be passionate again? I used to serve in church, but I was hurt. 
I walked away from that. I got busy with my employment. I got busy with family. And I turned my heart away. Do I have opportunity to go back? Will he still love me? Will he welcome me? Of course he will. Like in the story of the prodigal son. It is not the son that went out every day to look for the father. It is the father that was always out there to see if the son would come back. And the father is here today with his arms wide open saying, Come back son, come back daughter. I love you. I still love you. We can continue from where we stopped. I still love you. If you're in any of those two categories, you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, or you received him, but you grew cold and you want to come back. I want to quickly raise your hand if you say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. Raise that hand. Thank you for that hand. Any other hand? Raise that hand quickly, wherever you are. Thank you for that hand. Any other hand? Thank you for that hand. Thank you for those hands. Today is your day. He loves you. He loves you. The price was paid. Ashes, help them. I want them to come. Help them. Let them come. Yes. Come. He loves you. The price was paid. Come. Come quickly. He loves you. Come. He loves you. The price was paid. Let's all get up on our feet. And if you, if you, if, if you, if you, if you, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included, I want to come. Come. I will pray with you. He loves you. Today is your day. The price was paid. Come. He loves you. Jesus loves you. The price was paid. Your sins are forgiven. Come. Come to Jesus. Yes, you may not have raised your hand, but he loves you. He loves you. Come. Come to Jesus. Come. Any person in this section, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included. You want to, you want to be included in this prayer. I want you to come. Come. He loves you. Jesus loves you. The price was paid for you. He loves you. He loves you. Any other person? Come. He loves you. Yes. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. His blood is enough. His blood will wash you clean, white as snow. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yes. I'm still giving you time. You may not have raised your hand, but you say, I want to be included in that prayer. I can't carry this guilt anymore. I want to have rest in my life. Come we are waiting we are waiting for you come come Jesus loves you the price was paid it was paid come come to Jesus any other person come come yes come he loves you come come he loves you come he loves you he loves you yes come to Jesus come to Jesus yes I'll still wait I know there are more people there are more but don't stay there Yes, this is between you and God. This is your life. It is you and God. Any other person, come down. Come down. Run quickly and let's pray with you. Come if you say, I want to receive forgiveness. I want to receive forgiveness. I want to become a child of God. I want to become a son. I want to be sure that my sins are forgiven. That even if Jesus returned tonight, I would not be ashamed. I would face him and I would be glad because I know I'll go with him. Any other person that is out there and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, come down. Walk down the aisle. And we will pray with you. This is your moment. This is your day. The Bible says, this is the day of your salvation. Do not harden your heart when you hear this message. Come. This is the most important moment in this service. That's why we don't do it in a hurry. Yes, this is life and death. We would not be standing here if this had not happened to us. So there is nothing to be ashamed of. The devil has had you for so long. Say bye-bye to him. Any other person out there? You say, I really want to be sure. Any other person? Before we pray. Now if you're online and you also want to be included in this prayer, I want to take this moment very seriously. I don't want you to go through this prayer doing other things. No. Stop whatever you are doing and just focus on this. If you're driving, park somewhere on the sides of the road. Aren't you? Put your right hand on your chest. Put your right hand on your chest. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I want you, she's very far. Come closer. Lift your head. Lift your head. I want your head to be lifted like that. The devil has had your head bowed for so long. Sir, lift your head. Yes. Yes, like that. Now I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to mean this prayer. 
If you mean business with God, he means business with you. He means business with you. A simple prayer but powerful because you mean business with him. I want all of us to repeat this prayer with them. I want to say, Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the price for me. Thank you for dying on that cross. Thank you for coming to me. Today, I quit running. I come to you. A sinner in need of forgiveness. I know that I've come to the right place. To Jesus himself. I receive your forgiveness. Wash me clean in your blood. Jesus, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I surrender to you. From today, I belong to you. I will serve you all the days of my life. Devil, I say bye-bye to you. I no longer belong to you. Jesus died for me. He suffered on my behalf. He took my place. And he loves me. And today, I publicly declare that I choose Jesus. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I receive his forgiveness. I receive his righteousness. I receive his peace. I receive his joy. I receive his life. Thank you, Father. I know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I know that my sins are forgiven. I know that I am righteous. I am forgiven. I am loved. I'm a child of God. I'm a new creature. I'm royalty. I'm special. I'm loved. I belong to God. I belong to God. I belong to God. I am forgiven. And I am free at last. I'm free at last. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Look at me. Look here. Look here. Your sins are forgiven. You are now children of God. Hallelujah. The old is passed away. The new has begun. Even as you walk away from here, you're walking out a new person. All the names that you had called yourself, they are no longer your names. Praise the Lord. Yes, you're no longer a sinner. You're no longer a child of the devil. You're not a drunkard. You're not, all those names have been changed. You now have a new name. Child of God. That is your name. Child of God. You belong to God. Hallelujah. Congratulations. You belong to him. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are children of the most high God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations.